I should start by saying that kidney stone disease or nephrolysis is a highly prevalent disease worldwide. According to a recent study published in the World Journal of Urology, kidney stones occur in men and women from 7 to 13 percent in population in North America and from 5 to 9 percent in population in Europe and 1 to 5 percent of population in Asia. Kidney stone disease affects three times more men than women. However, studies of the last decade have shown an increase in the incidence of kidney stones around the world within the reduction of a gender gap. What should people worry about kidney stone? Causing pain, kidney stone actually damage kidney. This may lead to kidney failure. However, the probability of kidney failure is less than 2% of all cases. You can see this diagram in which it states that the most the most cause, the most, uh, the most uh, problem that causes kidney failure is diabetes after high blood pressure and oculus nephritis and other problems. And uh, it's only 2% of kidney stones that are causing this problem. Thus, kidney stone is nasty but usually not a life-threatening condition. This assessment leads to the following questions. Do people need to have kidney stones removed surgically as soon as they have been diagnosed? Are the surgical procedures safe? Can these surgical procedures worsen general health and quality of life? What should be the first line treatment for kidney stone disease? This question will be addressed in this presentation. Common standard treatments for kidney stone are extra corporeal shockwave lithotripsin, ESWL, and percontinuous nephrolithotomy. Lithotripsin was developed in the beginning of the 1980s, and today ESWL is considered as a primary treatment for renal stones between four millimeters and two centimeters in size. ESWS uses shock waves to break a kidney stone into small pieces that can more easily travel through the urinary tract and pass from the body. PCNL was invented in 1978. Today it is primary treatment for stones of more than two centimeters in size. PCNL is minimally invasive procedure that removes stones from the kidney via a small puncture wound through the skin. Sadly, the initially promising results of SWL and PCNL are overshadowed by the widespread side effects and complication caused by these procedures. What side effects can be expected after extraoperal shockwave lithotripsy, ESWL? 
Shockwave lithotripsy can damage kidneys and they may not work as well after the procedure. Usual complication after ESW are bleeding, severe pain, and urinary tract infections. The long-term side effects after shockwave lithotripsy are hypertension and diabetes. About 30% of people may develop these severe health conditions. Chronic disease kidney, in kidney is a late complication after ESWL and relates to its negative impact on the renal function. Rare complication includes spleen rupture, intrarenal hematoma, cardiovascular events, and others. In some cases, additional shockwave treatments may be needed. After lithotripsy, 50% of patients will develop new stones within five years. What complication can be expected after percutaneous nephrolithotomy? Though PCNL is a minimal access surgery, yet it may have many devastating and life-threatening conditions. The overall role rate of a pleural injury after PCNL reaches 1% during the continuous access function to PCNL. And adjacent solid organs are also at risk of injury. Injuries of hollow organs like the small bowel and colon have also been reported in about 1% of cases. Injury to the renal collecting system occurs in 8% of patients patients. Post-operative fevers may occur transitionally in 30% of patients undergoing PCNL, while sepsis may be developed in 3% of patients. Days following PCNL is very rare and may occur is up to 0.7% and may occur secondary to complications like pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and sepsis. In incidence of residual stones after PCNL ranges from 10% to 60%. But it should be noted that about 80% of patients have a recurring kidney stone within eight years from the first storm. Therefore, they can face these risks again. <coughs> can diet help to dissolve kidney stone? For many years, people have been trying to find a way to cure kidney stone with a diet in order to avoid surgical procedures. My experience showed that proper nutrition can dramatically slow the progress of kidney stones. Thus, people with kidney stones can live longer without surgical intervention. However, a diet alone cannot treat kidney stone disease. As kidney stones grow, they have negative impact on daily activities of the sufferers. In the recent decade, Dr. Allen's device for kidney care has been successfully used for the natural dissolution of kidney stones. This is a safe therapeutic treatment with absolutely no side effects and complications. The device was designed following on my medical research and clinical observation on the efficacy of 
Thelma Bala Simpson. Thermal balancing therapy, enabled by Dr. Allen Device, is based on a new understanding of the origin of diseases. My research reveals that all chronic internal diseases have the same root, namely pathological activity of capillaries. Two functions of small blood vessels, as termed by physiologists, namely constriction of capillaries and spontaneous expansion of capillaries are responsible for the pathological activity of capillaries. The main factor is that the nervous system does not regulate spontaneous expansion of capillaries. So the expansion can continue and continue. The expanded capillaries form the extra tissue that creates pressure in the affected area. Gradually, the built-up pressure inside the organ leads to its malfunction. My conclusion is that this physical factor is responsible for its development as a chronic internal disease. Now I want to speak about etiology and pathogenesis of kidney stone disease. The vascular factor plays a decisive role in the pathophysiology of kidney stone formation. An initial trigger, such as excess of different elements in blood, develops crystal forming substances in the kidney tissue. These crystals stick together, creating microscopic renal calculi. These calculi irritate the kidney tissue, and that creates the focus of hypothermia in this area. That gradually becomes a trigger itself, irritating the surrounding kidney tissue. To improve blood circulation in the affected tissue, the spontaneous expansion of capillary net occurs. This process creates pressure in the area and the secondary focus of hypothermia and consequently kidney stone growth. Thus, the vicious circle occurs with a constant growth of this kidney stone. In order to eliminate the focus of hypothermia and consequently improve blood circulation in the kidney tissue that actually dissolves kidney stone, Dr. Allen device has been developed. Dr. Allen device received a patent in the US together with thermobalancing therapy. The patent is an acknowledgement that it is a completely new therapy for kidney stone disease. Dr. Allen registered these devices in medical uh, healthcare products regulatory agency in the UK in 2010 as a class one medical device. A class one medical device without measuring function and supplied in non-sterile condition does not require involvement of a notified body. Dr. Ryan device is non-invasive and does not cause any side effects. Thus, this device is permitted to be used by patients at home. Here you can see the picture of Dr. Allen device, it consists of two thermo elements and surrounding belt. The thermo elements is made with a special wax-based mixture and it accumulates naturally emitted body heat and becomes a source of energy itself. Maintaining the temperature at the required level. 
You see on this picture how it looks like on men and women. You see that it is very easy to wear. It's only on the back and it's um, very easy to use and it does not impair the day-to-day -day activity. Important features of this device is that uh, the treatment temperature must not exceed the normal body temperature. The thermal element must be applied tightly to the skin in the projection of kidney. Dr. Allen device must be used continuously for a prolonged period of time. Over the years, we have obtained very strong empirical evidence confirming that therapeutic device dissolves kidney stone. And I told about a female patient, 44 years old, who was suffering from this problem for 24 years. And uh, over two years ago, she started wearing Dr. Allen device and she has not experienced a renal colic since. We, I have collected a large number of case studies uh, provided to me by the users of Dr. Allen device for kidney care from all over the world. All of them have been able to successfully dissolve kidney stone with the use of the device. You can see on this table for patients, different patients from different countries which had uh, kidney stone in one or in both kidneys which used device for six months and uh, oh, about two years. All of them benefited from this treatment and uh, the salt their kidney stones without any surgical intervention. There is compelling evidence showing that this thermobalancing can improve kidney function also in people with long-lasting kidney stone disease. In conclusion, I want to tell that the implementation of thermobalancing therapy will make a dramatic improvement to the standard practice of treatment for kidney stone disease. The results of over 10 year long clinical observation confirm that Dr. Allen device and thermobalancing therapy are effective for patients with kidney stones. In addition, as I said, there is a preliminary evidence that the therapy can improve kidney function in people with long-lasting kidney stone disease. Thermobalancing therapy gives an opportunity to treat kidney stone disease therapeutically that will improve the quality of life of millions of men and women globally. Thank you.